For Ted Gundy, who was 19 and fresh out of high school when he joined the Army in 1944, boot camp is his last innocent memory before being shipped across the Atlantic. Not long after arriving in Europe, Ted and his squad were thrust into a fierce firefight. History remembers it as the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge was the largest battle the United States Army ever fought. It's the winter of 1944. The German army is beaten up and quickly losing ground. But as the Allies continue their advance toward the German homeland, Adolf Hitler decides to launch a final, desperate offensive. For the most part, it was a complete surprise to frontline Allied units when the Germans finally led into them. That's because Hitler had waited for the winter weather to reach its worst. The Germans knew the Allies had air superiority. They waited for a storm, a snowstorm, to attack because they knew that the Allies wouldn't have air cover. On the ground, the situation might have been even worse. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold. I guess the coldest winter they ever had over there. The Americans are not prepared for winter warfare. They don't have the proper shoes. They don't have the proper overcoats. They don't have the proper blankets. But I thought that night when I laid down to go to sleep that I wouldn't be here the next day. It was that cold, I figured. Hitler's strategy has worked. The Allies are scrambling and suffering heavy losses. Ted Gundy was an army sniper when he finally made it into battle that cold winter of 1944. But it wasn't his experience as a marksman that he relied upon when he and his squad quickly came under an artillery barrage. And I, I wrote my dad, told him, I said, uh, I've dug some dirt, but I've dug this one faster than I ever dug anything else. And it gets, when you get shelling, you, you get right at the job, you know. When you hear a shell coming in, get on the ground and get as flat as you can get. But two weeks after the Battle of the Bulge, while on patrol in Germany, no amount of digging would have helped. I never did hear the next one that hit me. It just felt like someone give you a big kick in the leg. That was the last time Ted Gundy would see a battlefield. The lower part of his right leg was shredded. Had it not been for his friend Charles Jones, he might not have survived. I knew it was bleeding bad, but I didn't know the artery was cut. And Jones had crawled down next to Sergeant for some reason, I don't know why. And uh, I hollered at him to come and put a tourniquet on my leg, and he came up, I forget what we use for a tourniquet now. I think maybe a boot lace or out of one of my boots. And uh, tighten it up, and then the medic came and gave me a shot, and I asked him where the rest of the boys was at. He said, they're all dead. I just got skin and bone, don't have any muscle in it. Ted Gundy was one of the lucky ones, though he'd lose his right leg just below the knee. Jones would survive the war as well, and the two would remain close friends until Jones's death in 2009. I can't believe how hard that was for me. Now, I can't believe how hard you miss a buddy. Once a sniper, always a sniper. The black hat is the grandest prize an army marksman can earn, and Ted Gundy is about to see just how much he's revered. So on behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, soldiers and civilians of the United States Army Marksmanship Unit, Sir, I'd like to present you this black hat of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit. Oh, you don't know. Congratulations, sir. You don't know how much it means to me. We've only presented about eight black hats to non-members of the Army Marksmanship Unit. The wearer of the black hat is a member of an elite. They're members of the best shooters in the world. You don't know how much you guys. I'll never forget it. Sir, that means, that means the world to us. But now it's time for Ted to show the world he deserves the black hat. The World War II sniper will attempt a shot he'd never dreamed possible, hitting a target with modern equipment at a thousand yards. He'll be coached by the finest sniper team in the world, two-time international champions, AMU Sergeants Robbie Johnson and Jason St. John. He walked up and he came over and he was expressed to us that he was honored to be here with us 
And I guess not trying to be insulting to the man, I just thought that was silly because, I mean, the honor is definitely all ours. So to meet someone that was actually there and, um, and was a sniper back then and, you know, was in the Battle of the Bulge and Baston, and, man, it's just a great honor for me. Ted will be starting with a shot from 300 yards, and this will truly be a blast from the past. He hasn't seen his Army-issued 1903 Springfield A-4 since leaving the service in 1944. And on behalf of Shooting USA, Navy Arms, and a Grateful Nation, we want to give you an exact replica of your 1903 A-4 that you used in the war. God bless you, sir. So he's got his rifle. He's got his world-class instructors. Now it's up to him to ring a target from 300 yards. Damn, good. The first shot's good. But Ted's not satisfied. That's uh, three inches below center mass and three inches left. You want to go one more, you can try to hit that gong. You just barely missed the gong. So one more shot from 300 yards with a World War II era rifle at a dead center hit. Yeah, you got, you got the gong that time, sir. Dead center. But you walked him right up, one, two, three. You couldn't ask for any better performance. The next shot is the one he's been waiting for, a thousand yards. I couldn't, I couldn't even dream in a thousand years how, how you would do that, how you'd even see a, a human that far away, you know. So you're anxious to find out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll have the latest technology on his side for this one. The 03 Springfield is replaced with the AMU's custom Remington 700, one of the most accurate rifles in the world. I, I hope that I can hit the target, but uh, I, w I would, if I was betting money, I'd bet nine to one that I don't. <laughs> but that's a long, long way. Nervous. It's all right, sir. That's it. That's it. Good hit. Actually, it was much better than a good hit. Though no one could tell from more than half a mile away, Ted's first attempt is a headshot on the steel target. And I can't explain it how my heart was pounding and I was breathing heavy and lucky I even hit it. Look. Well, he might have gotten away with saying he was lucky on the first shot, but not the second. You just hit him right in the mouth. Or the third. Should be good. Another one right in the mouth. Huh? Perfect shot, sir. I just couldn't believe I could hit anything that far away. Whatever age we are, we get to that point where you're like, I can still do that, you know, and I think he proved today he still can. It's a five inch group at a thousand yards. It's impossible. So it's perfect shooting that brings the perfect end to a perfect week for an American veteran. Ted Gundy, still a soldier, still a sniper, still a hero. This has been one of the, <laughs> one of the nicest things that ever happened in my life.